I think we're all storytellers from a very young age. I think kids are just as emotionally intelligent as adults, sometimes more, and they are just as interested in the many different fascinating things that are going on every second inside any individual you care to name, including the characters in their stories. I've spoken to a lot of lifelong devoted readers about the work they do, what their hobbies are, where they go on holiday, how easy they find it to make friends. And I find that people who read a lot find all this stuff just a little bit easier and a little bit more rewarding. Every story helps us understand ourselves and other people better. I was thrilled and honoured and delighted and a little bit scared when I was asked if I'd like to be the Children's Laureate for the next couple of years. Although Laureate is a slightly posh sounding title, it's actually a really simple gig. My job is to remind those that need reminding that stories, sharing them, reading, reading to each other is incredibly important. Every reader knows that where you've got words, you've got pictures. Even if a book doesn't have pictures in it, there are plenty of pictures in the imagination of the person reading the story. And I like to go to art galleries and see the work of people who create wonderful pictures from their imagination onto the wall. And this resulted in me being an ambassador at Brisbane's wonderful Gallery of Modern Art. I think I've been inspired a few times not to write a whole book by seeing a painting, but I've often seen paintings in galleries that have given me an idea for a character or for a bit. I'm lucky I have ideas floating around me the whole time. They feel like friends in a way, and sometimes one will get really big and start bouncing off my head and to attract my attention, and that's when I know I've really got to explore the story in that particular idea. I think most people have ideas floating around them. We can't see each other's ideas when we're walking down the street, but when we put them into stories, or even when we share them through the reading of stories, it's a great way to be reminded that we're all creative. We all have a lot of creative things to offer the world. Stories are a lovely place for those ideas to meet each other. I have to confess, Although I know a lot of very long and impressive words, my favourite word is bum. I've been writing for over 30 years now. Almost every day I sit down at my keyboard and let my imagination do its job. But it's not just an imagination an author needs. An author needs a bum as well. Because if I didn't have one, I would have been flat on my back on the floor on an almost hourly basis. So I want to publicly thank my bum and the bums of every other writer in the world. I found myself very interested in writing a story about friendship. So I thought I'm going to take a couple of young people, I'm going to write the best friendship that could possibly exist between two young people, but I'm going to put those two young people slap bang in the middle of some of the most unfriendly human behaviour on a huge scale because I want to see if friendship is tough enough to survive the opposite. Well, if you think of really unfriendly human behaviour, you think of war. And I didn't have to make a list of which wars um, I was going to write about because I have a distant family connection with World War II, and in particular, the terrible part of that time, which we call the Holocaust. The Nazis murdering millions of Jewish people. I thought the first book about Felix once, I thought that would be it because I think a writer should be able to write a story in one book. But there's been something for me in my relationship, my friendship with Felix, and the terrible world he occupies, that made me not want to say goodbye to him at the end of that first book. I've written six so far. I've decided that every story needs an ending, and even a series of books, which is really just one story in, in a number of parts, also needs an ending. So I've decided that seven seems to be quite a good luck number. I decided one day I wanted to write a story that, whose main character was not a human being. When I was at university, I, I, one summer, I needed a job 
So I went up to far north Queensland and worked for a few weeks in a sugar mill, actually in the cane fields um, next to the mill. I was on night shift and every night from 6 p.m. to 6 a.m. I was out doing my work and noticing that hundreds of cane toads were just sitting around watching me. I actually got to know them quite well during that period and years later when I was looking for some warm-hearted, intelligent, very likeable creatures that for some reason most humans hated for my story, cane toads were the ones I picked. I think a good place to start looking for characters and ideas for stories is to look at yourself and your life. Make yourself the main character in a story. If you don't want to be recognised, pop into your imagination and change some of the outside bits of yourself so that you're not recognised. And then just think of a great, big, difficult, scary, almost impossible to solve problem. It could be something you've heard of happening to somebody else that you're hoping will never happen to you. Or it could just be something that you make up. And then your job as the author is to help your character either solve or at least survive that problem in as interesting and fun and unusual a way as possible. I would say to anybody just starting out writing stories, try and make yourself laugh and cry at least once in each story. Because if you can do it yourself, others will have the same experience and they will love you for it. <laughs>